Hey and welcome everyone to our video guide, it's Ned from Caspio. In today's quick video, I'm going to talk about tasks and how they allow us to generate notifications either via SMS or email, manipulate data in other tables, all based on a specific schedule. So if you have a date field in your table and you want to check against that date in the table, you can perform these other actions throughout other tables or like I said, either generate an SMS to notify somebody all in real time, all automated without you having to involve a lot of manual work or human intervention. So let's take a look at my table so that you can see three different examples that we're going to cover today. We have a table of attendees, we have a table of events, and I have a reports table. Now these two tables are linked together because one event can have many attendees. But the first task that I want to run is for my events table. What I would like to do is change the status of my event to expired two days before the event date. So let's have a look and see how we can do that. Let's go down to tasks. We're gonna set up our very first task and what I would like to do is configure this to run daily to check against that event date in my table. For my action, we're going to update. I'm gonna snap this in place, kinda of like Lego pieces. And then what we're updating is the events table. I want the status the equals to expired and then based on the where condition where today's date is two days before the event date. So we're basically trying to calculate two days before the event in order to change that status. So we need to go to the date element. We're going to calculate the difference. We're going to calculate that difference in days. And what's very important here is to include today's date. So we go back to the date element. We drag the timestamp. That's already set to my Pacific time zone. And then this other field that pops out, if this gets removed, you can always add this back in by going into data and dragging the field and snapping that in place. And then just simply select the event date and you want that to equal to two. Very important to get the order right because you wanna check against today's date that it's two days before the event date. And as you can see, we are calculating two. If you want that to be one day or three days, you can always change that number to years, days, weeks, it's up to you what you set the difference in on the left hand side. Once you're done, go ahead and save your task. Let's call this change event status to expired. We're going to save and enable. And I know that in my table, the event is actually on the 24th. Today is the 22nd. So it is two days before the event. I'm going to simulate this by clicking on run now. But normally this will be automated at midnight depending on when you set that frequency. I'm going to go to click run now. Let's go back to my events table. Let's open it and you will now see the status change to expired, which will no longer have this event be listed on the front end because we changed the filter to expired. And now for any other event that you have in this table, it's always going to check two days before the event. And if it meets that criteria, it's going to change the status to expired. Now, the second task that we're going to run is on the attendees table. What I would like to do is send an email reminder one day before the event to the email that we have on file for each of the attendees. So let's go down to tasks, create a task. And again, you can set this frequency. I'm going to run this daily. You can change when you want this to start and when you want this to occur every day, every other day. It's up to you. We're going to hit apply. And now what we want to do is choose the action to send an email. In my table, I don't have phone numbers, but if you have phone numbers, you can also send an SMS. But I only have emails in my table. The next thing that we need to do is click on the gear icon to select the data from the attendees table. We pick this table so that later on we can pull the email from that table and include that in the to field once we send that notification. However, this table doesn't have any of the event date information because I'm trying to send a reminder one day before the event to each one of my attendees. So what we need to do is we need to join the attendees table to the events table inside the task. So we're going to click on the gear icon, click on join, and from here we want to select the events table. And now we just want to join these two tables using the event ID. So we have the event ID inside the events table, and we also have the event ID inside the attendees table. A classic primary key to foreign key because one event can have many attendees. Finally, we want to set the where clause to equal to one day before the event date. And we just talked about that in the previous example, so it should be a very simple setup. We go to our date element. We calculate the difference in days 
Once again, we're going to go to the date element, grab the timestamp, which is today's date, and you can snap this field over here to the right. In the drop down, select the event date and have that equal to one. Now you have the condition set, the criteria. So one day before the event, we will always be sending this email to the attendee. Well, let's finish this off by configuring the actual email. So now for our two field, we want to go to data, drag the field element, snap that in place, and then simply select the attendee's email. The subject line can be anything you want. You can say event reminder. And then in the body of the email, you can compose your message to say whatever you want. For example, this is an email reminder for your upcoming event. You can also insert fields as parameters. So if you wanted to address the actual attendee by their name, you can include the attendee name, add that into the body of the email, maybe put a comma there, and now they're going to get addressed by their name. And then you have the message underneath. Now, what the task is doing is always going to check all of your attendees against the events. And if the attendee is registered for the event and the date is one day before the event, each one of those attendees will always get this email as a reminder. So let's save our task. And let's go ahead and call this send email reminder to attendees. And then we're going to hit save and enable. Now, I don't have an actual email because I don't want to expose any emails in the table. You just have to take my word for it that this task will run and it will operate the way it's supposed to. So if you create this on your end and you run the task one day before the event, you will get an email to your inbox so that you can see how the functionality works. Now, the final task that we're going to create is for our reports table. Inside this table, I have a checkbox called visibility. It can be called anything you want. And what I would like to happen is to check this box 90 days after the report has been created inside this field. To make that report available, let's say for the employees on quarterly basis every 90 days, because I'm going to be adding 90 days to my report and then automatically check this box for it to be visible. So let's see how we can do that. The final task we're going to create is again, you're going to configure your frequency, let's say daily. Click apply. We want the action update. And we want to update the reports table. And we want visibility to be checked or true in this case. And now we have to set the condition. So the first thing that we want to add is the timestamp. So we're today's date. So let's go to our date element and drag over the timestamp. And what we want is for it to be greater than or equal to. And then what we're going to be doing is adding 90 days to the actual date created field that we have inside a reports table. So we go to our date element, and then what we want is to add 90 days. And then for the field, we're going to snap this in place, and we're going to select our date created field. So now what's going to happen is the task is running daily, and if it equals to 90 days after the date created field or greater, it's automatically going to change the visibility to true on that report. So let's save it, let's enable this, and let's call this change visibility on quarterly report. We're gonna save and enable. And in my table, I know that it's been more than 90 days, so it's, it should actually check that box for me automatically. I'm going to run this task to simulate that. We're gonna go to our table. Let's open up the reports table, and you will now see how the visibility is checked. And now on the front end, if I have a data page or a report created that's filtering my data based on the checked box, it's going to display that report for the employees or anybody else I make that report available for. This concludes my quick guide on using tasks in Caspio to automate procedures in the back end. This is really just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more you can do with tasks from simple to sophisticated configurations, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section. If you'd like to see anything else, I will be happy to record a video in the future. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.